Here's the inside of the uh, valve cover. It's really clean. There's no sludge buildup or anything like that. Um, happy about that. I'm still going to uh, clean it real thoroughly right now just to make sure there's no dust or debris or anything like that that would fall into the uh, head and down into the engine. So I'm going to do that next. Okay, got it all cleaned up and ready to install. I got the gasket laid out and uh, shouldn't take too long to wrap this up. I don't know if you remember yesterday in my previous video when I was under the hood, but uh, I was whining a little bit about all the plastic stuff and not really liking it too much. But then I remembered something I shared with the church in the morning yesterday. And I said, in all things, give thanks. So I was thinking to myself, is there anything I could give thanks about on this plastic stuff? And then I looked and then I found that Ford used to have extra bolts in these valve covers and these were really a pain in the neck to get off uh, just because of all the stuff you got to remove and I thought I can give thanks to God because there's four less bolts I would have had to mess with but anyways just thought I'd throw that in for fun this thing's all cleaned up ready to go I'll get back with you in a little while okay everything's prepped getting ready to uh put the valve cover back on. I don't know if you remember yesterday, but I mentioned that uh, when I torqued these bolts down, I thought, eh, didn't seem as tight as I expected. So I actually found online the actual documentation from Ford and uh, the torque specs were correct, plus 30 degrees. And uh, after adding that extra 30 degree torque to it, I felt a whole lot better about the installation so now tried to get all the wiring harness clips connectors everything out of the way and I'm gonna slide the valve cover on be right back all right that took roughly five seconds sure went in easier than it came out the first time uh, we talked about deception yesterday uh, during the video and how we are being deceived and we kind of got off onto, you know, a little bit of uh, everyone being forced to almost participate in the desires of things that we don't necessarily care to really know about. Um, some of you commented uh, about uh, the LGBT community and Yes, people are born that way. They do feel that way. They think that it is uh, something that is who they are. And I can't argue with that. So I don't argue with that. I think that even though we may uh, have feelings for something, whether it's, you know, sexuality or if it is... Um, you know alcohol or if it is drugs or if it is money or whatever the sin Is what God came to cure It's what he came to heal us of The Bible says for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We really have to keep that in mind Because you know looking at other people and judging them will never do anything to help them come to Jesus Christ. Whether a gay person thinks that what they are doing, their lifestyle is a sin or not, is only something that God's Word and the Holy Spirit can convict someone on. Same thing with alcoholism, drug abuse, abusive relationships, all those things. Now, I, kind of to a different part of this topic, um, I want to talk about, just for a minute, other things that we are deceived on. How about this deal with COVID-19? How about this situation with this vaccine, or as a jab, 
you're supposed to call it if you're on YouTube so you don't get your station whacked. Um, I think that was huge deception. And uh, I'll explain that to you in just a minute once I get these connectors connected and we start bolting this thing down. Doing a final look see before we fire it up and the real concern I have is uh, these quick connects on the uh, heater hoses but uh, should be fine see what happens Hey everybody, <clears throat> I wrapped up the uh, VCT solenoids and took it for a test drive. It's 90 degrees outside, really hot. When the truck got hot, it was at its worst. Um, sitting here now in a parking lot because I wanted to try it at an idle for a little while because that's when I was having the failures. At idle, it would either run rough or stall. And so I've been sitting here Oh, at least five minutes, maybe more, and it's been rock solid right at 600 RPM. So I'm happy with that. <clears throat> I'm hoping this uh, little uh, project is all that the truck needed. We'll see how it goes. I am taking off tomorrow morning for northern Michigan. And that's without having a lot of miles on the truck after the repair, but I'm sure everything will be just fine. Um, so anyways, uh, back to the... Um, deception conversation we were having. Satan is the great deceiver. That's what he's called. Uh, he's, he has many names. Uh, he's the father of all lies, which also leads to deception. Um, you know, he's the bearer of light. He fell from a position of authority in heaven when he tried to become God himself. Well, you know, he is the prince of this world, literally. You know, if, if Jesus Christ isn't the one in our lives protecting us from the wiles of the devil, as the Bible calls them, or protecting us from his deceitful ways, some of which we discussed just a little bit ago, by saying, oh, this is okay, and that's okay, and don't worry about it, let everybody be who they want to be, I feel really like I have a responsibility to people to say, hey, we can't just do things our own way and get away with it for eternity. We can get away with it for a little while, but I'm more concerned about eternity. That's a long time. I mean, stop and think about it. Um, there's some scriptures that I'll bring up here as we get a little farther into Revelations. We've been away from that for a couple of weeks, but I'll get back to it. And in Revelation, it talks about some of the demons that are locked up and have been locked up for a long time that will be let loose during the time of the tribulation that will want to come and really deceive us. I mean, um, the Bible goes on to say later on that 
if God had not cut that time short, even the elect, the ones who had accepted him during this terrible time of tribulation, would even be deceived. So he's powerful. Now, how does he work? He works a lot through people. You know, he works through drugs. He works through, you know. But most of those things are introduced to us by people. And we can overcome those things. But he is really going to be working, according to scripture, through the governments of this world. Um, look at coronavirus, speaking of deception. You know, it's definitely a virus. It definitely is dangerous. Uh, we know a lot more about it now, so it's not as dangerous as it was in the beginning, but now we've got ways to treat it and whatnot. However, if you notice, our government here in the United States is still really pushing this vaccine. There's, it's not a law. It's nothing you have to do according to the law of the land, but they're still limiting your accessibility to certain things. Uh, in my state, Michigan, I believe both the University of Michigan and Michigan State University are requiring students to have the vaccine. I think if they don't, they can still come to school, but they have to wear a mask all the time. Now, this thing about the mask is a deception. The amount of germs and things that you breathe into that are so far beyond um, the protection they give us. It's, it's like a joke. Uh, you go to the store and you buy your little box of 10 masks and you read it and it'll say this does not uh, prevent you know, viruses or illnesses. It's, it's just deception. The vaccine, or I should call it a jab if I don't want to get kicked off of YouTube, the jab is deception. More people are being harmed by it, and we really don't know how many people are helped by it. Um, but they're using this to control um, the coronavirus control. Now, let's say it was just in the United States. We could say, okay, this is a global thing. You see the entire globe have this fear of the coronavirus. I mentioned yesterday, I believe it was in my uh, video, that the most repeated command in the Bible is do not fear. Fear controls us. Satan wants to control us with fear. He uses men to create things that will uh, allow us to have this kind of fear that makes us give up. You know, okay, I'll do it. Okay, I'll take the jab. Okay, I'll wear the mask. And it's all largely deception. The Bible says, do not be deceived. Man is going to try to deceive us all the way up until the tribulation is here and those who are left here during the tribulation, the deception will be far more difficult to um, not give into than ever before because it's most likely going to be life or death. Right now, it's just a hindrance. <clears throat> it's just something that aggravates us. You know, we really don't like it, but we can live with it. Um, the kind of things that are going to take place during the tribulation, if you don't fall in line with uh, this new world leader, well, then you're doomed. Now, think back, if you would, about, oh, I don't know, 5,500 years? Long time ago. I don't know exactly when it was. Um, it was after the flood and men had populated the earth and in chapter 11 of Genesis it talks to us about the Tower of Babel. Think about what happened here. Man tried to use a one world government and build a um, tower up into the heavens and be like God to be able to have control uh, what made them think this? Well, I think what made them think this is they knew there was a God in heaven who ruled over everything, but they didn't want, oops, sorry about that, but they didn't want to be accountable to him. So they said, you know what, we're going to do it our own way. 
Well, we're coming back to that. I know you've heard on the news and uh, different places about, you know, a one world government. It'll be so much better. We can all have the same currency system. We can all have global pricing. We can have all these great things that are going to make our life so much better. Just keep in mind what happened the last time man tried to do that. God came, smashed their little tower, and scattered them all over the earth, and they failed. Now, it's going to be much more serious the next time around. So, question things that you hear. Are they real, or is there a motive behind them? The motive behind God's word and where I'm coming at you from is eternity. Nobody's perfect. All of us have sinned. We can't fix that problem ourselves. We need to be redeemed or purchased. That's what Jesus did on the cross by giving his life, shedding his blood, you know, being buried, and then rising again three days later from the dead. And um, we need to accept that, accept forgiveness from him, accept him as our savior confess our sins to him because that will ensure or usher our eternity now if you don't accept him what's going to happen well the bible talks about this we'll get to it in the revelation series more but jesus talked about hell more than anybody he wanted to warn people of the dangers in the the torment and all of the terrible things that are going to be happening in hell where you'll never die but you'll be tormented forever and ever eternity you know there's there's a, a judgment that is coming and I want you to avoid it I want you to understand the importance of this offer that God makes to us to accept his son as our personal savior. Listen, it's really easy to do. It doesn't require any work because the Bible says uh, it's not by works of righteousness that he saved us from. You know, he, he saved us. We didn't save ourselves. We can't save ourselves. The only thing you can really do about it is pray a prayer. And I'm going to pray that prayer right now. And if, if you have never done this, I want to ask you to pray this prayer along with me. Um, this prayer is the most important decision a person can make during their entire lifetime. Buying a house is a big deal. That's a big decision. Getting married, that's even a bigger deal and a bigger decision. Spending eternity with God in heaven or with Satan in hell, that's an even bigger decision. So I won't talk anymore. I'm just going to say this prayer and uh, we'll be on our way. So, Father, so grateful that you have given us your son, Jesus Christ, to pay the ransom for our sins. And I'm going to pray this prayer that I would like you to pray along with me, people, that says, Father, I understand I'm a sinner. Jesus, I understand you gave your life on the cross and shed your blood to cover the payment of my sin. Forgive me, please. I ask you to be my Savior, to come into my heart. I praise you for being raised again from the dead and, and going to the Father in heaven on our behalf and telling him when we invite you into our hearts that we are no longer to be found guilty. We praise you for that. So, Father, I pray for all my friends, the people that are listening to this, friends that I may not even have met yet, that you would come into their lives, make a big difference. May they seek you because the word says if we seek you, we will find you. Thank you, God. I pray for my friends that they will take this to heart and accept you as their Savior. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, everybody, thanks for bearing with me for this uh, little bit of time here. I'll be on vacation for the next week and a half. However, I will try to put something up next Sunday. Uh, if I can get a connection, I'll be up in the northern parts of Michigan where at our cabin there's not a whole lot of reception. But, hey, you know what? Whatever happens, happens. We'll uh, see you uh, before too long for sure. So I've been sitting here talking to you for 13 and a half minutes and the uh, tack is still on 600, right on the button. Hasn't moved, hasn't uh, run rough, hasn't idled, uh, idled rough or stalled. Thank you, God. Um, thanks for going through this little repair with me and please remember the things that I, I mentioned and about that prayer of uh, inviting Jesus into your heart. I will talk to you all soon. God bless you.